I'm making this uh, reading for the uh, for next full moon um, way ahead, even before the next new moon in Pisces. And this is for the 17th of March. This is when it's happen, happening. And this reading is uh, um, for the location close to the Monarchia at the Hawaiian Kingdom in continuity. And um, you want to look at the new moon video where I said, this is the strangest chart I've ever seen since I've been looking at charts, many thousands. And um, as I said here, it's all about karma. The uh, Pisces is a sign that is very much about karma. Um, and um, so I was, I, I, I'm dreading this time because all this time until the full moon, it's going to be about karma. So that when the uh, Pisces uh, full moon comes along at the end of Pisces here, yeah? see, this is the end of Pisces, 27 degree of Pisces. And uh, in very uh, nice connection with Pluto, which is presently sitting on the um, uh, chart of the United States. It uh, has a Pluto return. I've been posting today about that. Quite interesting. So um, the reason why I'm making this now is because uh, uh, because we may want to stay patient when things do not go our way in the next time because there may be coming a time when it goes completely our way. So now I have been talking about Pisces before. That's my sign and I love it because it's really at the end of everything. As I had said before, um, Pisces have made this journey all through the zodiac and now they're coming to the very end, like the water drop is uh, um, falling from the sky someplace in the mountains, it's running down the stream, coming out in little sweet uh, uh, mountain springs, and uh, then uh, making the whole journey to the ocean where he, she is sucked up again by the sun, becoming steam, becoming cloud, and then the whole cycle starts again. So, uh, as we are now in Pisces, Pisces time, it's um, uh, it's all about the water, and we know here in Hawaii that right now it's all about the water. It's about uh, Red Hill uh, uh, scandal in um, on Oahu about the military uh, that is since many years poisoning uh, the, uh, the freshwater source for the uh, residents of Oahu without caring because they're out there making a killing, right? And um, so all this will be washed up. And it is, uh, I see quite a possibility uh, that we can really, uh, you know, wash out the military, the U.S. military from the Hawaiian Islands altogether because they're occupying huge, huge land masses here without paying anything for it. You know, I think a dollar per year, something like crazy of that nature. And they are poisoning every place they're located, whether on the so-called Big Island, which is actually the Hawaiian Island where I live, and uh, uh, now it's Oahu, and they really don't care. So, um, so this is what's happening here. Now, the reason why I'm so absolutely passionate and enthusiastic about this is that um, this here is the fifth house, and the fifth house stands for our artistic expression. In the fifth house, we can show off who we are, what we want. Uh, to express. And um, the fifth house is equivalent to Leo. Uh, and Leo is the second uh, fire sign of the zodiac. The first one is, uh, is uh, 
is Ares. Yeah, that's the person that goes through the head through the wall. That's the head of, you know, and the and the, the cosmic uh, man, the cosmic person, its head is, uh, his or her head is, uh, uh, is Ares. The feet is Pisces. So, but um, now Leo there is the, uh, the, the, uh, the second, uh, where the second uh, place where starts here, where all the four uh, element signs are repeating again, and there they are. All the elements are um, from from Leo to uh, uh, to um, Scorpio. There, the element is in service of the ego. So here we can show our beautiful egos. And uh, I am so absolutely thrilled about this new initiative, uh, which is uh, labeling itself as performance art. And uh, the Captain Cookout, <laughs> celebrated on the 14th of, uh, uh, of uh, February, uh, where the doctrine of uh, discovery will be uh, displaced by the... Uh, Doctrine of relationships. Sometimes it's relation boats and sometimes it's relation vessels. But uh, I think that is just awesome. This is just just what I've been waiting for. And um, so here we can make a huge splash at this coming uh, full moon. And, you know, and this earth, nothing is ever perfect and it's not supposed to be. So... Uh, uh, that doesn't mean the struggle ends here. Um, as I said so many times before, all the red lines, that's struggle. And especially if you have a, 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 a square, a, a square uh, like this, you know, prominent, fat, fat lines, as I said before, and this kind of image always shows that uh, the aspects are very precise the, the thinner the lines, the less precise is an aspect. An aspect meaning a connection between two planets where, you know, planets or, you know, celestial bodies or landmarks are relating to each other. And so uh, uh, either um, making both of their influences more positive or more difficult. So uh, let us first look at all the wonderful possible uh, positive uh, aspects here. Um, I, I, I go very intuitively by patterns. And you see here a beautiful, what they call a closed trine. And this closed trine is in Earth signs. We have uh, uh, opposing the sun, of course. That's what full moon is all about. We have the moon in the 11th house in Virgo, and the 11th house is an equivalent to uh, Aquarius, and it stands for the collective, yeah? And then we have Pluto here uh, at the end of a Capricorn, and as I said before, uh, this is the big transformation of the so-called United States. And um, I was saying, empires rise and fall, right? You know, and some, sometimes something has to fall so for something new to rise. And uh, don't we hope for that? And then we have this um, a nice connection. It's not very precise, but Pluto is a powerful force in, in the zodiac um, to the karmic aim, which is now in Taurus. I've been talking about that before. And here, it's also in the seventh house. Seventh house is equivalent to um, Libra, and it deals with, uh, with partnerships, harmony, with uh, equilibrium, with uh, justice. Libra has a lot to do with justice. Justice, beauty, um, its uh, ruler is Venus, just like Taurus, and um, so here we want to have uh, we want to keep our relationships beautiful in order to serve our earth mother in a proper way and heal her from all her inflictions of 
thousands of years of so-called rape culture. And here also we have Uranus, and this is uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this is the descendant. Here's the ascendant. That's the sign that's rising at the moment of this chart. And it's like the first house, as I said before, it's equivalent to Aries. Here it starts. And um, so all this is kind of the, the, the I part, the I as an ego. Ego is nothing bad. Egos don't have to be thrown away. That's a, sorry, stupid nonsense. They have to be refined. That's, that's what's needed. Because if we just throw them away, somebody will suck them up and misuse them. That happens all the time. So don't throw your egos away. Refine it. That's what they're there for. So um, here you have Uranus. And I've been talking about Uranus before because uh, he, she stands for very uh, sudden changes. And here we have this 90-degree uh, uh, angle. It's called a uh, square and it is um, with Mars so there's some Mars uh, Uranus uh, square so uh, that can mean an outbreak of sudden conflicts um, and um, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't be afraid of that that happens all the time I don't like it but it, it seems to be uh, not to, to be avoided so I wanted to talk first about all the positive things. And um, so let's see what uh, Uranus is doing good here. Uh, here you see a uh, sextile, a 60 degree angle to Mercury and very close by is Jupiter. So here the thinking uh, is enlarged by Jupiter. Jupiter enlarges everything. It's a huge planet and uh, uh, it's, it's it's supposedly always benevolent and um, so here our thinking is enlarged by uh, uh, by Jupiter and our thinking is o oceanic. It's, it's, it's ocean-like. It's very, very broad. And uh, so here we have this beautiful sextile. To, to to Uranus. Uranus is like uh, epiphanies, it's, you know, sudden inspiration. Uranus, Uranus is like the higher octave of Mercury. And um, then we have also, we have uh, Neptune. Neptune, uh, I hadn't explained that well enough in the last video, uh, stands uh, for unpersonal oceanic, uh, an endless love, cosmic love. And uh, when it's uh, well aspected and when it's not well aspected, uh, it stands for delusions, drug addiction, la la land, esca esca escapism, escapism. And uh, since I have been born and a little bit before and all this time, somehow Neptune and Pluto they always form a sextile. And all the people born in this time, you know, like I'm now, oh, I'm getting, I think, 67. I can hardly, can hardly count it any longer. But uh, um, uh, all of us, we have this in our birth chart, this wonderful sextile between Neptune and Pluto. So we are actually the people right now on this planet who are uh, working on transforming this planet with compassion and power. We need both. So this is, and, and here it's all concentrated very soon. Uh, 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 Jupiter will move further and will then conjunct, uh, meet Neptune, and this will be gi gigantic, gi gigantic, sorry. So then here we have um, in uh, Aries, Chiron, the wounded healer. And uh, so this is now in the sixth house. The sixth house is equivalent to Virgo and um, stands for, uh, for uh, 
repetitive, boring service work and harvesting and uh, uh, bookkeeping and all these kind of things that are necessary in the material world. But being in Aries, the first uh, uh, fire sign, um, it has there has to be activity. And here we have this beautiful uh, sextile between Mars and uh, Chiron. Mars and Venus and, uh, and Saturn being in the fourth house. The fourth house is equivalent to Cancer. That's the family domain. It's all about family. We have to, even though we have friction in the families, we have to get our, our power from our family lives. Oh, yeah. It is modern to run away from family. I've done that. Um, I've regretted it, but I can't fix that. Uh, that's our generation. The, the families have been torn apart uh, deliberately by the propaganda we have been uh, um, victimized by. The parole, the slogans. So, uh, but here we have this... Uh, uh, the sextile, meaning if we want to get aggressive, which sometimes, you know, it's like, yeah, we can't help it, we get angry. Um, um, it, it, can, it can support the healing process. Now, the healing process is, this is always the question, what's first, the, the, the egg or the, the hen? It's like, we, are we supposed to heal ourselves and then our 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 whole environment heals, or are we uh, supposed to be altruistic and not selfish and uh, uh, heal our whole environment <laughs> and then uh, expect to heal, to be healed uh, uh, ourselves? So I'm kind of, you know, I'm not sure about this. I'm trying both, I'm trying it both ways. Um, and so that is a very, uh, very important point. And you see here that there is no hindrance, no negative aspect on this, on this Chiron wounded healer. So um, the reason why I'm personally so happy about this chart is uh, because I have studied to be an art therapist and I believe in the healing quality of art when we allow ourselves to become creative, express ourselves and do that together also. Yeah, we have a chance here. And that's why I think that this uh, Captain Cookout uh, initiative, that's just like brilliant to my opinion. Absolutely what I've been waiting for. Okay, um, now let's look at this fantastic. So this is, um, this is all very positive here, but like the, the red kind of jumps in our eyes and, uh, and it's very stern. <laughs> Look at this, look at this uh, formation you have here. It's like, be intuitive about uh, what they call sacred in geometry. This is amazing, yeah? So this uh, I have learned uh, to call an, an achievement triangle. This is struggle. Now, where is the struggle? Here is the mission point in where? Leo. But the mission is empty. We, we, we don't have to, you know, think about mission. What we have to think about is playing, expressing ourselves, acting, poetry, painting. Even if we paint our faces, that's art as well can be. Yeah? And so that's, that's happening right here. And so we don't have to worry about uh, any particular mission because just, you know, allowing us to be our own selves is already, <laughs> that's already a mission in itself, because it's not that easy. And um, so then here is the sign rising. The sign rising is in Scorpio. Scorpio is uh, the second water sign, and it's associated with swamp. Uh, but it's also a, a sign where everything goes very deep. It's... Uh, it's the sign um, where um, we get aware of sexual energy and how it can be used not only for sex but for many other re but for many other things. 
And uh, we have to know that this is a very dangerous thing because just like I always have this, uh, this metaphor of, 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 the, of the electricity, yeah? You can, you can fry a man a meal with uh, electricity, but you can also fry the man. So that is with what people call magic. This is Scorpio. And uh, here we have this um, we have this square between Mars and Venus, They're very close together. And um, then to the mission point, and then in opposition to Uranus. And this is called the part of fortune, which every full moon, full moon is always in conjunction with the I call this the point of you. This is I and you. There's this beautiful book by uh, Martin, Martin Buber. That's a German Jewish uh, Zionist that actually then became a professor in Jerusalem. And uh, he wrote this book, um, I and Thou, and it talks about personal relationship and also a personal relationship to God which has been like a, a groundwork for a lot of uh, theologians, theo theology, theo people who study theology. Okay, so that is this, but this, this is the I and the thou, uh, this is this connection, where we stand face to face with somebody in, in opposition. And um, so, um, so here, as I, I repeat myself now, this is... Uh, the karmic aim of the whole event is relationship in the seventh house. It's right here. Now here is a little do that. That um, it's 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 kind of a cosmic uh, a Maya marker, but it's not a planet. It's called Lilith, the dark moon, something to do with the moon uh, position, and um, that stands in the. Uh, in the eighth house, the eighth house is equivalent to Scorpio, and um, this is not too well aspected. Uh, so uh, I've been talking about we need to learn about uh, what they call occultism, what has been secret, because this is uh, this is what this is the psychology that has enslaved us for many 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 millennia, yeah, not only centuries. And um, so here's a warning that studying these things can give us an idea of what power really is. But it is always, and that's why, that's partly why it is so very, very secret. It is always the temptation and the danger to use it in a harmful way egoistic, egotistical way, to dominate other, to get what we want. So there is a, um, there's a warning, and here you see a, not very thick, a very thin, but none of the, nonetheless important green line. This is called a quincunx, and the fact that uh, it is so thin means it's not exactly 150 degree, um, but it goes to Pluto. And this also is, this is subscribing the warning I just gave here, that, uh, uh, that we, should not, we, should, we should be very careful not to play power games. Here also we have the, uh, we have the, uh, this um, square to the moon. Moon is so much also intuition, so we could very well use our intuition to to uh, play uh, power games. Hmm? There's power games and uh, knowledge uh, about occult science, very dangerous. So there, beware, beware. So concentrate on your relationships and make them good. That's possible. Because the, the seventh house is not only about marriage, it's also about enemies. And most of all, it's about justice. So if we are able to, to express our tremendous yearning for justice and, and love, that can only be a fruit of justice, which is the base of peace, 
which then is the stem for love to bloom. Worldwide. Okay, I know this is incomplete, but it's already very long. So I leave it right there. And please subscribe, like it. I depend on that. You know, I don't get paid for this. At least I want to be liked for it. Thank you.